All right, so in last week's lesson, I mentioned at one point in the video that you could drop in anywhere on the fretboard. You could just pick any fret at random, and from that fret, whatever fret you pick, you can play any note, any chord, any scale, any arpeggio, in any key. And you can do that from any fret. And when I said that, I got a lot of comments, I got a lot of emails from you as well, asking uh, if I could elaborate on that point. And that's what this week's video is. This is gonna be a game changer for, for, for a lot of you, especially if you struggle with understanding how to use the fretboard and uh, you know play all over the fretboard and really organize. That's what this is all about, is organizing the fretboard, creating a few drawers that you can put everything in. That's how I like to think of it anyway. When you're improvising, you don't have time to sit and go through, like map it out. You just need to open a drawer and pull out what you need. That's what this is about. So um, um, we're gonna go through all the lesson material in this video. If you'd like to get uh, the extra materials, I've got a PDF file that I created for this. It's an eight page document. I spent a lot of time on this and I went through everything we're gonna talk about and put it in, uh, in one uh, printable sheet. You can pull it up on your screen or print it. Uh, but it's got all the major scales, all the uh, minor scales, major chords, minor chords in, in all 12 uh, keys, but all played from one position. So I just picked the fifth fret and I showed you how you can play everything from that fret. Um, scales, chords, uh, it's all there. So you get that and then also I'm gonna, play, at some point in this video I'm gonna demonstrate, I'm gonna play a little song and I'll tab that out and make that available uh, to those of you that are interested in that as well. So you can get those extra materials by going to activemelody.com, go to the weekly lessons page and do a search for EP552. Okay, so the idea behind this is if I pick any fret, uh, I can play whatever I want from that fret. Now here's how it works. So from the, so we're gonna use the fifth fret uh, as an example, right in the middle of the fretboard here. Um, if I pick this fifth fret, what I mean by that is, um, if that's gonna be my anchor, that's gonna be my root fret, we'll call it that. Now I can find all 12 notes in music within one fret of this fret. This is, how, this is what I mean by that. So it doesn't mean they're all gonna land on the fifth fret, obviously that wouldn't work, but either one fret away, one fret this direction, or one fret this direction. So either the fourth fret, sixth fret, or the fifth fret is gonna have everything I need to be able to play any of those 12 notes. Let me just demonstrate that, um, and, and uh, I'll go through this quickly. But we'll start with, uh, we'll go from A to G. So we'll start with our A note. That one's kind of obvious or kind of easy because it's right there on the fifth fret. It's the first string, it's also on the sixth string. But uh, we'll, we'll count that, and that's the first one. A sharp. That's one fret away, right? So that's uh, up here on the sixth fret. Uh, what about B? So my B note would be here on the third string. Uh, you know, notice it's just one fret away from that root fret, so it's on the fourth fret. So that's B, go up one, you get C, go up one again, you get C sharp. Now what about D? Well, there's a D on the fifth string. Uh, then D sharp would be here. And then E would be up here on the second string. F would be on the second string as well. And then we're to G, and my G note would be here on the fourth string, G sharp, and then we're back to A. So all 12 notes were within one fret of that root fret of where I started. So what that means is all 12 notes were within one fret of my root fret where I started. So that means you're gonna have to know the note names on all six strings in order to do that. All right, so some of you are probably saying, all right, cool, so uh, from, from one fret, I can, uh, I can play any of the 12 notes in that same neighborhood. Uh, okay, big deal, what do you do with that? Well, this was the thing that blew me away. This was the big epiphany that I had with this, is if I can find the note, I can play the chord. And if I can play the chord, and I've also got where the scale is, and I've got the arpeggio. So in other words, going back to that A, that's my A note on the first string, and I'll give you a formula for this in just a minute. If you can find your root note, the, the note name on your first string, you can play the E shape from the cage system. I'm barring where that note is, and I've got the A major chord. I've also got my A minor chord by lifting my middle finger. I've got my A minor pentatonic scale, all connected to that note. I've got my A major pentatonic. I've got my A major scale. I've got my A minor scale. I've got all of that information. I've got A7, 
And it's all connected to finding that A. So that means I could do that for all of the other notes I found, which means I can play any chord or any scale or any arpeggio uh, in this neighborhood. All right, so let's test this now. Let's, let's find a B, let's go to our B note. And from that note, let's build out our B major scale, our B major chord, all of the stuff we were just doing for A and, uh, and, and test that. So remember our B note was on the third string. It was that fourth fret third string, right? Now here's the formula, okay? So, uh, and this is where the cage system relates to strings. So this is a cool thing that I've never really thought of and I've never realized this, but um, when we played our A, major chord on, in this fifth fret neighborhood. Uh, we found it on the first string, and if you find your note name on the first string, you use the E shape. Hopefully you can see that. Just connect that first string, E shape. If your note name is on the third string, like this B note, you're gonna use the G shape. That little triad there is, uh, is the triad, and that's the note in the middle of that triad, right? And so there's your G shape. Now, when I play the G shape, I split it into two parts. I don't ever usually, I never play it like this. I just can't do that. So I might use the, I rarely do this, but I might use the bottom part. I never, hardly ever do that. Or the top part like this. That's what I use a lot. Because I can do that, I can do the seven chord, and then do the seven chord like this. I use that quite a bit. So anyway, it all hinges off that triad there. So hopefully you get that. If the note name is on your third string, you use the G shape. Now some of you are going, well, you can use the A shape too, and you could, but let's just keep it simple. We've got the E shape if it's on the first string. We've got the G shape if it's on the third string. What if your note is on the second string? Right, so my E note, if we're playing in this fifth fret as, that, that, as our root fret, my E note is on the second string. So in that case, you use the C shape. And this little D looking triad, which is in, in that C shape, it's like, a, to me, it's a triangle. And the tip of the triangle is the name of your chord. So that's an E note, therefore, that's an, uh, an E chord using the C shape. Now, I realize some of you can't make your chord that way. You don't have to use your paint. I'm just doing it to demonstrate. You could just play the little triad there. So if you struggle with bar chords and you struggle, struggle with making chords, just pick what you can. Just play two notes of the chord. It doesn't, you know, there's no rules in this stuff. You don't have to use all six strings. You just play what you can of it. So if the note name is on the second string, you use a C shape. What if your note name is on the fourth string? So in this case, that's an F sharp note, right? So that's on the fourth string, fourth fret. You use the D shape. So that's your root note and you can play it, it's, it's up here too, same note. Now I realize that the way that you would really do this is more like this, where you've got the D chord shape like we know in first position. I just can't do that with my fingers. So what I've done through the years is if I'm playing out of this shape, I play it like this. Now there's not a third interval, so it's not as pretty sounding, but it does work for major or minor chords to, to play it that way. But the key is the fourth string, that's the chord to use. Okay, so what if your note name is on the fifth string. So in this case, I'm playing a D note on the fifth fret, fifth string. Then you use your A shape, right? So now if you think about it, each of your strings relate to one of the positions of the cage system. Uh, I realize there's six strings and then there's five uh, positions of the cage system, but strings one and six on the guitar are the same note. They're just like two octaves apart. So hopefully that helps you realize that you can, if you can find a note name on any string, there's a correlating chord from the cage system, chord shape, that will allow you to build that major chord. And if you can build a major chord, you can also play the minor chord. All you have to do is take the third interval and flat it. And, and you know, I'm not gonna go through all of those for each of these, but that's what you do. So now you've got your major chords, your minor chords, and then this is where it gets really cool. You've got your scales. You've got your major and minor scales. So let's go back to our A we started with, right? So from this A chord using the E shape, I've got my, my A major scale. Now all of this is in that document, by the way. Um, I've got uh, all your major scales, ma minor scales, and everything all related to this fifth fret. Um, so, 
So that's in the document. Um, so you can practice that if you, if you want to kind of go through those. But you can see that when I found this A note, I was able to connect things to it. My major chord, my major scale. And by the way, it, this major scale thing, I have a lesson that I've done where, I've, where I go into detail showing you how to connect your major scale to each of these five positions. I'll put that lesson up on the screen. It's got practice materials. It's a great uh, exercise for really understanding how to play the major scale in all five positions. And they relate back to the five positions of the cage system. This is the E shape. So I'm going through the major scale using that shape. I've also got my A major pentatonic scale. That's the same as your major scale. You're just taking two notes out of your major scale. Minor pentatonic scale. Pattern one, right? It's right there. Um, and, uh, and minor scale as well. So that one note unlocked everything, and that's true of all of the other notes. So every one of those notes has the major version, it has the minor version, it has the dominant seven versions, it has major scales, minor scales, it has arpeggios, it has everything once you can find the note. And the fact that you can take one fret and you can find all 12 notes in relation to that one fret means, in my mind, it means I can play anything I want now anywhere on the fretboard following that logic. You know, if I dropped in up here on the ninth fret, for example, and I said, all right, play an E, let's find an E major uh, scale from the ninth fret. So I have to say, where's my nearest E note to this ninth fret? Oh yeah, there's one right here in the ninth fret on the third string. Remember, if it's a note on your third string, how would I build my major chord on that? I'd use the G shape. There's my E chord. So my E major scale, which I've connected to that G chord, and I talked about in that course I just mentioned. It's all right there. So I can find anything I want anywhere on the fretboard. All right, so let's take everything that we've talked about and put this into a practical example. We're gonna play over a chord progression. We'll improvise, I'm gonna improvise a little lead part and everything. And we're gonna do it in one position. And I'll show you how this works. So uh, we're gonna play a one, six, four, five chord progression. So a one, well, we'll do this in the key of E. So our E is gonna be the one chord. Our six chord, which is a minor chord, is a, I'm gonna play a C sharp minor chord. And then we're gonna to go to the A for the four, and then our B, or our B7 for the five chord. But we're not gonna play them down in first position, we're gonna play them up on this fifth fret where we've, been, where we've been at. So where's my E chord up here? Well remember, let's start with our note, there's our E note on the second string, so my E chord then is played using the C shape, right? Let's play, the next chord is a C sharp minor. Where's my C sharp in this area? On the fifth string. So if we're playing on the fifth string, we use the A shape. But remember, that's a minor chord. So there's our C sharp major, but we're gonna flat the third. So you can see that A minor shape. These three fingers are playing the same shape as if you play an A minor down first position. Are you get it, right? A, A minor, you're just flatting the third. You're doing the same thing here. Same exact thing. So we have our E, our C sharp minor. The four chord is an A. Where's our nearest A? Oh yeah, it's right here. We've already done that. And then where's our B? The nearest B to here would be here. The B using the G shape. Or you could play it like this. Or you could play the B7. Or the B7 here. Right, I've got options. But I'm staying in the same neighborhood. Now I could move around and play chords in different spots, but that's not the point. The point of this exercise is to really understand your fretboard. And so to me, this is just such an awesome exercise for that. So let's just improvise a little here. I'm gonna throw in some fill licks, some little improvised lead stuff, and I'm gonna use the E major scale. Maybe the E major pentatonic in a few spots, but that'll be where it comes from. All right, so I'm gonna start with my E chord right here. I'm just gonna make this up. I'm not gonna talk over it because I wanna tab this out and make this available to those of you that are interested. So here we go.
So you see what I'm talking about, right? I mean, that wasn't the, the greatest thing you've ever heard, but it's demonstrating the principles that we're talking about here. I'm playing all of those chords, including the scale and the little licks and everything, in the same neighborhood. But hopefully you see what I'm talking about. I could take that same concept and play it anywhere. We could come up to the ninth fret and play my E, C sharp minor, A, B. So we could do the same thing using improvising. We can go. All right, well, hopefully your wheels are turning and you're starting to see this thing a little differently than maybe you have. I want to leave you with one other idea, um, and this will be a huge light bulb to some of you, especially those of you that have struggled with understanding the cage system and like, what's the deal with caged? Why do, you know, why do I keep talking about it? What's the, why is it such an important thing? Oh, let's look at, think of it this way. This is a, an analogy that sort of hit me right before I started recording here. The cage system is just an, a drawer system. There's five drawers, and everything you can do on the fretboard, every style of music, every scale, every arpeggio, everything you can think of can fit into one of five drawers. It makes it much easier to, to access what you're trying to do than to think of it in other ways, at least for me. That, now, we are all different, and I realize we've all got different brains and different approaches to this stuff, but here's the way I think of it. And this is what I mean by the drawers. The drawers have labels on them, C, A, G, E, and D. Those are just labels, that's it. That doesn't mean it's a C chord or anything like that. It's just a way of labeling it. I have to call it something, right? We can't just say drawer one, drawer two. I guess we could, but C makes a little more sense because we're using the C shape. Let me demonstrate what I mean by that. So, if I were to play this, I'm playing an E chord but I'm using the C shape. So this E chord is, I'm putting this in my C drawer. When I just played that major scale there, I'm putting that in the C drawer because I'm, it's coming out of that C shape. Now it was an E major scale, but it's in the C drawer. All of this stuff, That's my E major pentatonic scale, pattern four. Right, it's in the C drawer because it's connected to this. Same is true with minor stuff. There's my E minor that's in the C drawer because I'm still in that C shape, I'm doing C stuff. There's my E minor scale, E natural minor scale. It's in the C drawer. Do you see what I'm saying? I'm not playing all over the fretboard. I'm staying in the C drawer here. So what about E minor pentatonic? It's in that drawer as well. That's my pattern three E minor pentatonic scale, but it's in the C drawer right there. Do you see what I'm saying? And hopefully you can see what I mean by that. I can fit all of the stuff that is in this shape, that C shape, I can fit it into one drawer. Arpeggios, right? Seven chords, it's in the drawer. It's just an easy way to organize it. And so it doesn't matter so much what the note names are or any of that stuff. To me, it's just, this is the real world stuff. This is the truth. When you're improvising, the, the people that are good at it, they're good at getting in those drawers and get what they need quickly. You don't have time to sit and go, let's see, is that a flat third or do I need to, is, there a sharp, is that a sharp? You don't have time for that. The song's already done by the time you you figured it out. But what you do have time for is having like five drawers and you can quickly get into them and get what you want. Now we've all got different ways of organizing our drawers and figuring out you know, kind of what goes where. But that's how I see it. That's, that's why I keep coming back to the cage system. If, you, if anyone can ever show me a better way to organize it, um, I'm, I'm all ears. But those five labels that happen to correlate with the five unique string notes on the guitar that I talked about, 
That's just, it's like a match made in heaven. It's like the perfect thing. So anyway, I hope you've picked up some ideas. Leave a comment. Let me know what works for you. Let me know what was awesome and helpful. Let me know what's confusing. I like knowing that. I like hearing feedback. That's how I learn and grow. That's actually where this lesson came from, was from your feedback. And we can do a deeper dive on the drawers thing. If you were starting to get it, but you didn't fully get it, let me know. And I'll, I'll do a future video on that topic as well. All right, we'll see you next week for something new.